is day number the next. We are cleaning out the engine. It needs a good degreasing and it needs the carburetors cleaned. We're gonna run a compression test on each of the cylinders to make sure there are no bad cylinders. And we also wanna know if it's the high compression or low compression version of the engine. Um, and there's also a possibility we have a cracked motor mount. So we're gonna check for that as well. When the whole thing goes back together, it's going to have a new electronic distributor to replace the old one. So yeah, let's get to it. At least the heater core looks like it's in good shape. And a bunch of, uh, that's how you can tell it's been replaced. The heater core? Yeah. This is all jacked up around there. So somebody's replaced it. Put a different one in. And it doesn't look like it's really, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't know. It should have been the whole size of that hole. I'm really wondering if that's not even the uh, correct one that goes in there. The parts that he was removing earlier um, is mostly the blower fan. That was the bearings in the blower fan were basically shot, so he ordered a brand new blower fan to install that. When taking that apart, we discovered there was some, as he calls it, thermal event that caused this to melt, basically. Um, this is the vacuum actuator. This is what controls when you flip the switch from like outside air to inside air or heat to cold. This is what controls that. And you have to have a good vacuum seal. And obviously something like this with the hole melted completely in it, um, it doesn't seal particularly well. So we're gonna need a new one of those. He actually already found one on eBay. There was only one on eBay with this part number on all of eBay. So for all we know, that could be the last one in the country. Uh, so that's on order. That will go in and fix that problem. Um, the thermal event also, of course, as he was talking about earlier, melted a whole bunch of the surrounding wires. So we need a new heater hose, which he already has on order. And then we're gonna have to splice new sections of wire into a whole bunch of the wiring going to the stuff in the dash. So yeah, that should all be fun. It's this kind of stuff that makes a car project take a long time. All the little tiny details. agenda is to wash the Yenko Versa and get that ready for sale. Unfortunately, that means we have to turn the water on for the first time in the season. And to do that, because this is an old farm built in the 1800s, I have to go down to the manhole and manually turn the water on. Make sure you have a full is coming up here, there's uh -huh. gonna be a valve. There's one water pipe comes up here, just turn the first valve. Well, try that. It should unscrew, which would be turning it to the left. Yeah. And if it's already all the way open, then that's not the valve. Eventually. Got that room by the thing. right 
right down in here because of that idiot having those things wrong. And one massive oil slick on the black top later. The engine is clean. The plan is to repaint the whole thing red. We're just gonna leave it in the car to do that because we don't have an engine hoist and that's just too much work. So we're gonna put some like sheets of cardboard up and tape things off. You can see we've already kind of started there. And he's going to paint it bright red. That's the plan. Apparently that's what he did with all his engines in the 80s. Uh, so yeah, it should look pretty nice. We're gonna take a um, steel bristle wheel connected to like a die grinder and go in and clean all this off because there's a whole bunch of like pitting and rust kind of still. It's not too bad, it's still really solid. It's just surface rust that needs some cleaning. And then paint it red. We suspect that the heater core, which you can see right there, is not the right one because the hole for it extends about three, four inches out past where the radiator stops. We're gonna have to look into that and see if that's supposed to be like that or if whoever replaced the heater core in 93 got the wrong one. Which, the way this car's gone, would not surprise me in the least. So we've encountered a bit of a snag with the continuation of this video series. And that is both me and my dad are now working full time. So the amount of times that our schedules line up are less. Which means he's down here doing things that I'm not recording. So when we left off, we had the whole HVAC system disassembled. We were looking at the heater core and I think the engine was being painted. As you can see, the engine has been completely painted now. It's the bright red color we planned on. Uh, a lot of these brackets for things like the alternator, the AC compressor um, have all been painted as well as this fan shroud thing. It's actually really dusty. Um, the heater core we suspect was leaking, so we went ahead and replaced it. Um, it was kind of actually difficult to track down a new heater core, um, but we got a new heater core, brand new, installed in there. Um, new spark plug wires, the new HEI distributor unit has been installed in the back. Um, new air cleaner cover, you got this nice little sticker for it, and we have this specialty, I don't know, air cleaner nut on there. Everything is so clean you could eat off of it almost. And that is about going to wrap up this video. The only things we have left to do really is we want to get the car Z-barred. Um, the air conditioning compressor needs rebuilt. I think right now the clutch is broken and the system needs recharged and the factory air should work perfectly fine after that. And there might be a bad ground connecting to the starter. We're not really sure. Occasionally the car won't crank over, um, but if you just tap on the starter a few times, it works just fine. So we're, our money's on a bad ground. But that will do it for this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, get subscribed, and ring the bell so you get notified when I post new videos. And I will see you guys in the next one.